In last year's developer ecosystem survey, by far the most common form of code analysis was whatever comes with the IDE. So we take our analysis support very seriously. We provide integrations with both types of analysis, static or pure code analysis, and dynamic or runtime analysis. And we've got big updates on both fronts in this release. Starting with static analysis. We've been moving much of our analysis engine to Clang D, along with our integration with Clang Tidy. And last year, we started moving DFA, that's data flow analysis, to our Clang D based engine. In this release, we're introducing global DFA. This works across functions and methods globally within a translation unit to find problems such as lifetime issues across multiple calls. For example, in these cases, we now detect pointers which may be null based on the code in the implementations of the functions being called here. But this one, it can see, is never null. And here we detect a use after delete, even though the delete itself is in a function that we call into. Do note though, that at the moment this only works if the function being called is static or in an anonymous namespace. And there are even some entirely new inspections made possible, such as detecting that these parameters are only ever called with the same value. And this work has also fixed or enhanced a number of existing DFA inspections as well. Another new non-DFA inspection we've added is one that checks that if you have a comment after the if def of a header guard, it matches the name of the guard itself. If you don't have a comment at all there, it doesn't fire. Another ongoing work in progress is our support for MISRA inspections for both MISRA C++ 2008 and MISRA C 2012. In this release, we're adding a couple of dozen more inspections, such as several that forbid implicit conversions to bool in conditional statements, a common source of hard to spot or diagnose issues. And if you use Qt, we're expanding our support with a new integration. Clazy is a static analysis tool focused on Qt idioms and implementation even warning of outdated cute specific practices. Moving on to dynamic analysis. This happens at runtime and may depend on inputs and other runtime factors. Now, a little over a year ago, we introduced integration with the code coverage tools, GCOV and LLVMCOV, but with a couple of limitations. No branch coverage and no remote mode support. 2021.1 removes both of those limitations. For this demo, I'm going to use a code base from a TDD course that I run. Since this code was written using TDD, we should expect good coverage figures. Well, let's see how that holds up. If you don't already have code coverage enabled for a project, the first time you try to run with coverage, it will warn you that a coverage specific run target is not set up and will offer to create one for you. If you do that, you'll see that it's added a new CMake profile that passes coverage as both CXX flags and C flags. While we're looking in the settings, if we search for coverage, we'll see a new checkbox under tools for show branch coverage. This should be set by default, but in case not, you can turn it on here, or of course you can turn it off if you prefer. But with this enabled, if we now run with coverage, we'll see the report, usually in the panel on the right hand side, and there's a new column for the branch coverage percentage. Now we can ignore the catch two header. The low coverage numbers there just mean that we're not using the whole framework. And we'll look at the tests in a moment. We're looking at the code under test. In board.cpp, we can see we've got good line coverage, 100%. But branch coverage is not quite as good, only 83%. Let's double click on that, see if we can work out why that is. Now we can see there's not a lot of code in board.cpp, yet we still have one line showing here as having only partial coverage. That's what the yellow bar means. But why is that? There's no branch here, is there? Well, this is a call to map find. We don't usually expect it, but find may throw an exception. That is, if the comparison function that it uses throws. So there's an implicit exception branch here, which we haven't covered. Now this is something we may have to watch for with branch coverage when using GCOV with GCC. LLVMCOV works a little differently and doesn't consider the compiler-generated branches, so that may give you cleaner results, 
but you may also miss some interesting cases. But for LLVM, branch coverage only works from version 12, which is not yet released as I record this. OK, so let's look at those tests. The coverage there seems much worse. Again, double clicking to dig in, we see a lot of red on these functions, meaning no line coverage. Well, these are helper functions to be used when printing values out. By default, they're only called when a test fails. Since all our tests are passing, they're not being used. To verify that, let's pass catch to the dash S option to print successful tests as well, and then rerun. And our line coverage is much better. Branch coverage is up too. We can see the one line not covered is this catch all when serializing the enum. That will only fire if we add a case to the enum and that value comes up in a test. So it's a defensive coding tactic, and that's okay. But what about that branch coverage? Well, we can see partial coverage up here. We're hitting the line, but it yields a Boolean expression. This is matching actions, which is what our tests are testing. Since all our tests are passing, we're only testing the successful case when this function returns true. So let's add a test to verify the false case as well. We should test cases where the action differs in type as well as target. And if we rerun, our tests still pass, but our coverage has improved. Still quite low though. Looking again, we see that most of the partial coverage now is on those require statements. That's because these macros expand to quite a lot of code, some of which is never executed, and that's by design, as well as some exception handling, which is not happening here. So these are always going to be noisy when it comes to branch coverage. So if you're using branch coverage with a test framework like Catch2, either ignore branch coverage in test code entirely, or at least split any helper code or other logic, like that comparison operator, out into a separate file so you can track it separately and more easily. That way you can focus your branch coverage reporting on the important code under test. The other limitation I mentioned with our coverage support previously was when working with remote toolchains. Well, you can now use code coverage, both line or statement and branch, when working over SSH too. And that applies to our other dynamic analysis integrations as well, Valgrind Memcheck and the Google Sanitizers. So that's been a tour of the extensive set of enhancements we've made to both static and dynamic analysis support in this release. I hope you enjoy being more productive with C-Line 2021.1.